What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started talking about the possible Mets blockbuster trade for a third baseman, don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash on that like button. And if you enjoy all my content, want to see more videos, want to get notifications for when I post my videos and go live, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So possible blockbuster trade regarding the Mets with possibly two different players. The first one, Chris Bryant. The other one, Eugenio Suarez. Now, before I go right into that, the Mets made a three-team uh, th uh, a trade regarding three teams, the Red Sox, Royals, and obviously the Mets. The Mets received Khalil Lee from the Royals. Ben Benintendi went to the Royals, and the Red Sox got a bunch of prospects back. But this trade for the Mets with Khalil Lee bolsters the farm system for the Mets. And what I think this does, and the reason why I think they made this trade, was to get a top 10 type of prospect in this system. And Khalil Lee is going to jump right into that top 10 in the Mets farm system for sure. And what I think this does, this protects some of the farm system when we're looking to trade a couple of prospects for Eugenio Suarez or Chris Bryant. I think that's the major reason why this trade – the Mets wanted to get this prospect back. It gives us outfielder and outfielder that can play all three outfield positions. He's young. He's only 22 years old. We'll look at his stats a little bit. Khalil Lee, just to give you an idea of what he is as a player. But we want to focus on Eugenio Suarez and Chris Bryant. And a possible blockbuster trade that the Mets could do fairly soon it seems like they're very interested in upgrading the third base position jd davis doesn't seem like the guy they want anymore as i said a, about a week ago sandy alderson said we are okay with jd davis on the opening day roster at third base i told you guys that was a complete and utter lie from sandy alderson that's what sandy alderson does he was clearly looking for a third baseman the whole time he does not want J.D. Davis as the opening day starting third baseman for this team. He just doesn't. It was clear a couple of weeks ago when they were talking to the Cubs about Chris Bryant. And they, re they spoke a little bit about Eugenio Suarez, but it seemed like that's picking up steam too. So when Sandy Alderson said J.D. Davis will be okay, he would be okay with us as the starting third baseman opening day, it was a lie. Clearly a lie. But with Chris Bryant and Eugenio Suarez, we know how these players are. Chris Bryant struggled last year. He had a couple of injuries. But Eugenio Suarez had a bad year in 2020. But before that, he's been really good. These two guys are all-star type players. It's the type of trade that you will make not worrying about the prospects you give. The one prospect I want to not get rid of, if we can protect him, is clearly Francisco Alvarez. That's it. Obviously, Matthew Allen, I would like to keep Brett Beatty, players like that. But when it comes to Eugenio Suarez and the Mets trying to acquire him, it's going to take more than it would for Chris Bryant because Eugenio Suarez got a couple of years left on his contract. I believe it's, yeah, he got four years left from 21, 2021 to 2024. He's under team control, about 11 to $12 million. And then in 2025, He's on a team, he's on a club option at 33 years old. So Eugenio Suarez is under team control, so he will cost more. With Chris Bryant, it's gonna take a it's probably not gonna take as much to get him because he's on he's a free agent after the 2021 season. So when it comes to the guy we just got, Khalil Lee, what is his stats? Well, we're gonna look at a couple of years really quick because I want to focus on the two third basemen that the Mets possibly can get. But it's important to know this prospect, he's jumping into the top 10 in the Mets prospect list, so it's good to look at. So he played in uh, single A and double A in 2018. He uh, went back to uh, double A, and he stuck in double A in 2019. But I want to focus on, if you look at the, the second year in 2017, this 2017 year, when he had 17 home runs and 61 RBIs in single A. Now, obviously, it's single A. I get that. But it showed the promise at 19 years old how good this player can be. 
he struggled a lot with strikeouts. On base percentage was not that high either the last couple of years. But in 2020, when they had that alternate site, they changed up his swing in Kansas City. So it's it looking like it can possibly help him. He is playing in a Puerto Rican Winter League right now. And I his batting average is not that good in 20 in if you look at it right here, 263 and 275. But I feel like the kid can be one of our top five prospects in, in a year or two. He's only 22 years old. He can play through all three outfielder positions, and he possibly can play center field also pretty well. He's got a great arm, great defender. But what I also think that could be possible, I have a feeling that the Reds or the, Bron- the, Reds or the Cubs were looking for this type of player in a deal. And it's possible that the Mets made this deal to get Khalil Lee to put him in a package for Eugenio Suarez or Chris Bryant. Now, I don't think so. I think they probably wanted to just bolster the prospects in the farm system a little bit so they can use a couple of players for the Eugenio Suarez deal or Chris Bryant deal. We'll look at the trades in a little bit that I propose. But that could be a possibility, too, that they could use Khalil Lee in a package to retain one of those third basemen. But it's still good to have this guy in our farm system if the Mets decide to keep him. He's going to be in the top 10 in our prospect pool, in our prospect list, in the farm system. So that's always good to have, both of that farm system that we really need, as we all know. But when it comes to Eugenio Suarez... What would it take to get him with just getting Suarez alone without a pitcher involved like a Sonny Gray? So if you look at the trade that I propose, the Mets will get Eugenio Suarez and the Reds will get Ronnie Mauricio, the number one short, the number one prospect in the Mets system, JT Jin, the right-handed pitcher. He's in our top 10 and Chevron Newton. Now Newton is 12th ranked in the Mets system, but, I feel like we can get we can get him because we did also acquire we, we also were able to get Lee, which helped our farm system a little bit. But we're getting rid of a couple of these guys because it's gonna take a lot to get Eugenio Suarez with the amount of control that he has for the next couple of years at a reasonable price. But I know it's steep, I know it's a lot of players, but if you look at the uh, Newton and Mauricio, there's nowhere to play these guys, especially if the Mets are going to extend Lindor and bring in Eugenio Suarez. Mauricio has nowhere to play when shortstop and third base for at least the next four years is going to be occupied by Lindor and Eugenio Suarez. With JT Jin, it really does suck to give him up because it's always hard to get pitches that could be very good to great when you get when you have him in the minor leagues, but you keep Matthew Allen. So I think that's why you would have to give JT Jin. And Newton is an infielder who also doesn't have a spot on his team in the majors because he's blocked up by McNeil, Lindor, and Suarez. And obviously first base is occupied by Alonzo and Smith. So there's not really much we can use with him. Now we seem like we're gonna solidify our bench soon. You know, we did you know solidify our bench the last about a week uh, in a week we basically did that so our bench is basically done and i'm not now you can also put jd davis in this deal and knock out newton i just wanted to show you the prospects that can possibly go now one of these might just not be in there and jd davis might be in there so to give a third baseman to the reds but i was just focusing on the prospects that the mets could possibly throw in the trade with along with JD Davis. So with Eugenio Suarez, this is the trade proposal I would do to get him, especially when he's on the team control for the next four years and club option for the fifth year. Now, when it comes to Chris Bryant, what would the deal look like if we have to get Chris Bryant and Eugenio Suarez is really not the guy that the Mets could get? Well, this what it would be for the most part. So the Mets would obviously get Chris Bryant and the Cubs would get Ronnie Mauricio and Thomas 
Zapucky. Now you were like, okay, that sounds really good. But with Chris Bryant, clearly he only has one year deal left on his deal, 2021. So you don't have to give up too much. Now you have to give up a really good prospect. And Ronnie Mauricio is our number one prospect. And I feel like we can give up Ronnie Mauricio when we get into the third baseman. Now, I we keep Vientos in the system as our one third baseman in the minors. Because if we lose Chris Bryant, Vientos can possibly step up in 2022, 20, in 2022 to take that third base role if he projects well in the minor leagues a little bit over the, over the year of 2021. So Ronnie Muso is expendable, in my opinion, and he still keeps Francisco Alvarez and Matthew Allen. So to go with Chris Bryant, if that's the way the Mets go, Ronnie Mauricio and Zapucky is the players that I give up for the Mets. Now, I prefer Eugenio Suarez because I think he is better and probably going to be better in the next couple of years than Chris Bryant. He's very good defensively. Offensively, he's got really good numbers. But we have more control over him, and that's what I'm looking for. You want to put a team around Jacob DeGrom that can win now and in the next two to three years. And we can do that if you solidify this team with Eugenio Suarez. And then you can worry about the back end of the rotation. And J.K. Rieta, eh. But you still got the Taiwan Walker, James Paxton, that seemed like the Mets are interested in him again. So that's what I would do with Eugenio Suarez with the Mets. That's just my opinion. You guys can have different opinions. I understand that. But it seems like all the, a lot of Mets fans... Eugenio Suarez and Chris Bryant is the way to go. We all love J.D. Davis. You know, he's a he's one of those guys that fit well with the team, but at the end of the day, he's not good defensively. Offensively, he's not better than either Chris Bryant or Eugenio Suarez. So I don't feel like it's worth going into that when it comes to these players against J.D. Davis. I did focus on Justin Turner and J.D. Davis. The numbers are similar offensively. Justin Turner is obviously better defensively. But if it had to come down to Justin Turner or J.D. Davis, I want J.D. Davis. But when it comes to Chris Bryant or Eugenio Suarez, guys, J.D. Davis can go. No doubt about it. But if we do get Chris Bryant, I feel like J.D. Davis can still be a Met and be on the bench, in my opinion. Because you are not giving up as much. And I don't know if the, the Cubs will want J.D. Davis back in the deal, but they they definitely want the prospects. But you're not going to give what you have to give up for Eugenio Suarez. So to recap the two trades that I propose, the Mets get Eugenio Suarez, the Reds get Ronnie Mauricio, J.T. Jin, and Chevron Newton. Now, you can probably take Newton out and throw J.D. Davis in, depending on what the Reds want. But... These are the prospects I feel like will be in some type of package along with J.D. Davis. So that's something to look at. And with Chris Bryant, the Mets will obviously get Chris Bryant. The Cubs will get Ronnie Mauricio and Thomas Zapucky. So those are the two trade proposals. I think the Mets could package to get either one of these two guys. I prefer Eugenio Suarez. But at this moment, either two is better than Davis, and I take it. That's my take on the third base blockbuster the Mets potentially can do. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, please, if you enjoyed this video, like this video. And if you enjoy all my content, all my videos, guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.